Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum students Welcome to a new day, a fresh day uh, Today's lecture is very important and uh, it's something of a uh, it's a common sight in any language class and that is the grammar section you all understand the basic concept but uh, it is imperative for all of us for me and for you as well to revise the basic concepts so that you may be able to uh, develop your communication skills both uh, in written form uh, as well as in oral form so without further ado let us jump into the lecture today's lecture is regarding the parts of speech and uh, let me clarify a mythology uh, before uh, 2002 grammarians used to consider nine parts of speech but nowadays in modern English there are only eight and the eight parts of speech are nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions and interjections. Now we will go into the details of these words later on but I need you to understand a few things. If you can look at the heading of noun you will find I have written open class with it and if you look at the heading of pronoun I have written closed class with it now I need you to understand this what is the meaning of open class and what is the meaning of closed class open class is beta something which keeps on changing and closed class is something which does not change regularly it may change in the future but it takes time but open class is something which changes which keeps on changes now I will explain it uh, by giving example to you of the Urdu language you all are aware of the concept of mobile internet computer uh, these apps whatsapp Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. तो अगर आप गौर करें, तो ये सारे अल्फाज English के हैं. ये सारे अल्फाज किस चीज़ के हैं? English के हैं. और अगर आप थोड़ा और इसमें गहराई में जाएं, that then you will understand that all these names are nouns actually. और अगर आप 15-20 साल या 30 साल पीछे जाते हैं, यानी अपने बुजुर्गों से पूछें तो अगर आप उनके सामने उस दौर में इंस्टाग्राम ट्विटर या इस चीज का नाम लेते तो शायद वो हैरान होता है कि ये बच्चा किस चीज का नाम ले रहा है सो ओपन क्लास से ये होता है जैसे कि नाउन के आगे ओपन क्लास है ये जितने नाम मैंने गिनवाए ये नेम्स ही थे ये नाउन्स ही थे ओपन क्लास का मतलब मकसद ये है कि इसमें हर वक्त इजाफा होता रहता है हर वक्त इसमें चेंजेस आती रहती हैं सो दैट इज व्हाई वी कॉल इट ओपन क्लास Nouns are open class and pronouns are closed class. Pronouns में इतनी तब्दीली नहीं आती. Maybe in future तब्दीली आ जाए. Maybe in future there is a change in it. But right now they are termed that closed class because इसके अंदर changes आना near to impossible है. So there are eight parts of speech as we already said. What is the function of parts of speech? If you look at the slide which on which you are now. The parts of speech indicate how the world functions in meanings as well as grammatically within the sentence. An individual word can function as more than one parts of speech when used in different circumstances. Understanding parts of speech is essential for determining the correct definition of a word when using the dictionary. Now, ye function hai. Ke ek to ye hai ki aapki grammatical सेंस में और सेंटेंस की कंप्लीशन में उसमें ये काम आता है दूसरा कभी कभार ऐसा भी होता है कि एक पार्ट ऑफ स्पीच जो है जो कि एक जगह नाउन का काम कर रहा है तो दूसरी जगह 
एडजेक्टिव का काम करें फॉर एग्जाम्पल हम कहते हैं ही इज एन ऑनेस्ट मैन ही इज एन ऑनेस्ट मैन तो ही इज एन ऑनेस्ट मैन में अगर आप गौर करें तो मैन से आगे ऑनेस्ट लिखा हुआ है ऑनेस्ट जो है ये एडजेक्टिव का काम कर रहा है लेकिन अगर मैं कहूँ ही इज ऑनेस्ट मैन इसके साथ ना लगाओ तो यहाँ पे ऑनेस्ट नाउन का काम कर रहा है तो ये सेंस होनी चाहिए क्योंकि पार्ट्स ऑफ स्पीच विद इन सेंटेंस पोजिशनिंग पे भी मैटर करता है कि आया वो क्वालिफाई कर रहा है किसी चीज़ को आया वो डिटरमिन कर रहा है किसी चीज़ को आया वो मॉडिफाई कर रहा है किसी चीज़ को आया वो किसी चीज़ को एक्सप्लेन कर रहा है सो यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस थिंग इस डिटेल में हम बाद में जाएंगे इस डिटेल में हम जब इनकी टाइप्स हम पढ़ेंगे इन आर्ट पार्ट्स ऑफ स्पीच की तो उसमें हम फर्दर फर्दर इसको एक्सप्लेन करेंगे हम एग्जांपल्स भी आपके सामने रखेंगे बट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस दैट पार्ट्स ऑफ स्पीच हैव वेरियस रोल्स नंबर वन ग्रामेटिकल सेंस नंबर टू प्रेगमेटिक सेंस प्रेगमेटिक यानी सेंटेंस का वो मीनिंग बनाना यानी उससे मीनिंग आखस करना उसकी खास तरतीब होना फिर उसकी पोजिशनिंग के पार्ट्स ऑफ स्पीच यानी शुरू में क्या प्रपोजिशन आ सकता है क्या शुरू में कंजंक्शन आ सकता है क्या शुरू में एडवर्ब आ सकता है क्या सेंटेंस के शुरू में वर्ब आ सकता है नहीं उसके अंदर उसकी एक पोजिशनिंग होती है उसका एक ख़ास स्ट्रक्चर होता है उसके मुताबिक आपने उसको देखना होता है यस पोइट्स और एकेडम जो लिटरेरी आर्टिस्ट हैं पोइट्स यानी शायर और नावलिस्ट जो हैं वो बाज़ अवत ग्रामर्स के रूल को ब्रेक करते हैं इवन जो स्पोकन कन्वर्सेशन है इसके अंदर भी हम ग्रामर्स के रूल को बाज़ अवत फ्लैक्सीबिलिटी की हद तक तोड़ते हैं लेकिन ये है कि जो एकेडमिक राइटिंग होती है एकेडमिक राइटिंग से बरात बाई एकेडमिक राइटिंग आई मीन यू आर राइटिंग द एसेज द लेटर्स द आंसर्स टू द क्वेश्चन दैट यू राइट दे आर इन एकेडमिक राइटिंग एक्सेप्शन इज देयर एक्सेप्शन इज वन यू कोट सम वन वन यू कोट सम वन यानी हदीस और सम बडीज कोटेशन और सम बडीज फेमस सेंग तो जिसने जिस तरह उस बंदे ने या जिस तरह रसोल्लम की हदीस है जिस तरह उन्होंने फरमाया होगा या उनकी ट्रांसलेशन की गई होगी जिसने भी की होगी आप उसे एज इट इज़ कोट करेंगे वो तो उसमें अगर ग्रामर रूल्स किसी हद तक तोड़ मड़ोड़ किए गए हैं यानी उनमें कोई फ्लैक्सीबिलिटी शो की गई है तो दैट इज़ नॉट योर कंसर्न लेकिन जो आप खुद लिखेंगे पेपर के अंदर वाट इज़ योर एक्सप्रेशन एंड द नोट्स दैट वी प्रोवाइड टू यू उसके अंदर ग्रामर मिस्टेक्स की गुंजाइश नहीं है तो सबसे पहले जो हमारे पास पार्ट्स ऑफ स्पीच है दैट इज नाउन नाउन इज अ नेम ऑफ ए पर्सन प्लेस थिंग और आइडिया इन शॉर्ट नाउन कैन ऑल्सो बी डिफाइंड इज नाउन इज द नेम ऑफ एनी थिंग के आर एल मॉडल कॉलेज मैन हाउस हैप्पीनेस दीज आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ नाउन इसी तरह यूर नेम्स एव लुक अराउंड यू where where are you sitting usually you are, right now you will be sitting at your homes in your room look around you everything that you name everything that you name is a noun for example wall is a noun the table is a noun the mobile is a noun the mobile apps are nouns the table the bed is a noun the sofa is a noun whatever you are eating like if you are eating chips or if you are drinking taking tea or if you are drinking any cold drink or water all of these things are noun understood a noun is often used with an article that is a an or the but not always proper nouns always start with a capital letter common nouns do not nouns can be singular or plural concrete or abstract these are the various types which we are going to discuss later nouns show possessing by adding s yes if you look at the symbol s there is a comma above it we call it apostrophe what do we call it apostrophe some of you may be aware of it some of may you may be not aware of it but there are mainly two types of apostrophes apostrophe of possession yani possession se murad malkiyat हम कहते हैं उसकी किताब ठीक है सॉरी uh, uh, ये अहमद की किताब है दिस इज अहमद बुक और देन दियर इज आल्सो द सेकंड टाइप 
اپوسٹرفی آف اومیشن آپ نے دیکھا ہوگا کہ بعض اوقات ڈائلاگز میں یا کوٹیشنز میں جیسے کہ دیکھا ہوگا ہی از ناٹ فرام دس سٹی اب اس سینٹنس کو دیکھیں ہی از ناٹ فرام دس سٹی اس کو میں ایسے بھی لکھ سکتا ہوں ہی ازنٹ آئی ایس اپوسٹرفی این ٹی تو یہ جو مسنگ ورڈ ہے وہ از ناٹ کو جو میں نے شارٹ کیا ہے اس کے اوپر انڈیکیشن کے طور پر میں یہ کاما لگاؤں گا اسے ہم کہیں گے اپوسٹرفی آف اوبیشن تو یہاں پہ جو ایڈنگ ایس ہے یہ اپوسٹرفی آف پوزیشن ہے ناؤنس کین فنکشن ان ڈفرنٹ رولز ود ان اے سینٹنس فار ایگزامپل اے ناؤن کین بی اے سبجیکٹ اے ڈائریکٹ آبجیکٹ این ان ڈائریکٹ آبجیکٹ اے سبجیکٹ کمپلیمنٹ اور آبجیکٹ آف اے پرپوزیشن یہ ویریس کنسیپٹس ہیں ہر ایک کی سیپریٹ سیپریٹ ڈیٹیل ہے جو کہ بعد میں فردر فردر آپ کے ساتھ شیئر کی جائے گی نیکسٹ چلے جی پرو ناؤن اب اس پرو ناؤن کے آگے لکھا گیا ہے کلوز کلاس اگر کلاس والی ڈیفینیشن آپ سمجھ گئے ہیں ایف یو ہیو گریس دا کنسیپٹ کہ وہ پارٹس آف اسپیچ دوز پارٹس آف اسپیچ وچ کیپس آن چینجنگ وچ کیپس آن ڈیولپنگ وچ کیپس آن ایڈنگ ڈیلی نیو ورلڈس نیو برانڈس نیو مٹیریلس اور آبجیکٹس آر ایڈیڈ ٹو اٹ دین وی ٹرم دیم ایز اوپن کلاس بٹ ایف دی آر آر پارٹس آف اسپیچ وچ ڈو ناٹ چینج سو فریکوینٹلی اور ویئر چینج از نیئر ٹو امپاسبل وی کال دیم کلوز کلاس اے پرو ناؤن از اے ورلڈ یوزڈ ان پلیس آف اے ناؤن شی وی دے اٹ ناؤ وی ول ڈسکس دا ٹائپس یس وی ول ڈسکس دا ٹائپس ڈونٹ وری اباؤٹ دیٹ بٹ وٹ ڈز اے پرو ناؤن ڈو اٹ ریپلیس اے ناؤن وائی ڈو وی نیڈ ٹو ریپلیس اے ناؤن in a in academic writing now the answer is very simple to bring quality to bring what quality for example consider this i am writing an essay on us on my colleague or class fellow or friend that ahmed is my best friend ahmed goes to school regularly ahmed wakes up early in the morning ahmed goes to mosque ahmed goes there ahmed goes uh, here so If I use the word Ahmed so many times, the name Ahmed so many times, the writing will lose its vigor. The writing will lose what? Its vigor. So it's not good. What we need is something that the writing should be qualitative. The writing should not be uh, boring. So what we do? We use pronouns. Instead of a noun, we use pronoun. A pronoun is usually substituted for a specific noun which is called its antecedent. Some people pronounce it antecedent or so antecedent. In the same sentence above, the antecedent for the pronoun she is the girl. Now, the sentence we are referring to just above the pronoun there is a sentence. The young girl brought me a very long letter from the teacher and then she quickly disappeared. Oh my! If you look at this sentence, which I can, uh, which will be used further as well, the antecedent for the pronoun she is the girl. Pronouns are further defined by the type. Personal pronouns <coughs> refer to specific person or things. Possessive pronouns indicate ownership. Reflexive pronouns are used to emphasize another noun or pronoun. Relative pronouns introduce a subordinate clause and demonstrative pronouns identify, point to or refer to nouns. Now, relative pronouns introduce a subordinate class. We are going to discuss some types of sentences and types of conjunctions as well. So, this point is very important. Kindly highlight it and note it so that uh, you may be able to remember it when we are uh, doing conjunctions. and types of sentences verb open class verb is action we know that but there are some action verbs and there are some non action verbs for example action verbs are i kick the ball now the kick in the sentence is action verb and we are doing a physical action but if i say i felt ill yani maine apne aap ko بیمار محسوس کیا یا آئی فیلٹ ویک آئی فیلٹ ڈس ہارٹن تو یہاں پہ فیل جو ہے دس از این ایکشن بٹ ناٹ ان فزیکل فارم یو آر فیلنگ اٹ سو دا ٹو دس ڈفرینس 
is that the first one is action verb that is kick and the second one is static verb or stative verb in which there is no proper action, there is no proper physical involvement. The verb in a sentence expresses action or being. There is a main verb and sometimes one or more helping verbs. She can sing, she is the main verb, can is the helping verb. Sorry, sing is the main verb, can is the helping verb. A verb must agree with its subject in number. Both are singular or both are plural. Verb also take different forms to express tense. Now, this verb is very important. Yes, we are going to discuss the types. And when we are doing the different types of tenses, the tenses that is past, present and future, this verb will be very important, particularly in present is simple or indefinite tense and past simple or indefinite tense because the shape of these verbs changes. The shape of the verb changes. Adjective. It's an open class uh, parts of speech again. Adjective, we all know it's to describe a noun or a pronoun. Pretty, old, blue, smart. So qualities keep on changes changing for example colors every day new colors are invented you must have visited markets with your mothers or sisters and when they are buying dresses the colors they will describe now for, for, from since childhood we have been only aware of the eight or ten colors that we know that this is red this is orange this is purple this is black this is white it's this is yellow or the rainbow colors but Ladies are daily aware of new colors that are coming in fashion or in, in their dresses. So, like this is magenta, this is blood maroon, this is blood red, this is royal blue, this is dark blue, this is lighter blue, this is sky blue. So, this, these colors or these adjectives keep on changing. Similarly, uh, different words are introduced in the dictionary so that's why it's an open class of words an adjective modifies or describes a noun or pronoun an adjective is a word used to modify or describe it usually answers the question of which one what kind and how many article a and the are usually classified as adjectives now this is very important articles a and the were usually before consider diff, uh, ninth parts of speech the ninth part of speech but now they are considered as adjectives so how many what kind or which one this is the description what an adjective gives we will discuss the different types coming to the next part of speech that is adverb again it's an open class part of speech it modifies or describes a verb Usually it is formed by adding ly at the end of an objective or at the end of any uh, other part of speech. For example, extremely, carefully, uh, dutifully, honestly, uh, mainly, etc. These are all adjectives, but there are other ad adverbs as well. And adverbs describes or modifies a verb an adjective or another adverb but never a noun it usually answers the questions of when where how why under what conditions or to what degree so when we discuss these the types you will understand what does the uh, uh, lecture or what does this sentence be preposition it's a close call, limited words, very brief list of preposition in the English dictionary. The most famous are with, in, until, on, at, you understand, since and far in the tenses. But yes, there are some exceptions, there are certain rules that we need to understand that we will discuss later on. But what is a preposition? A preposition is a word placed before a noun or pronoun to form a phrase modifying another word in the sentence by the tree with our friends under the table over the table in order to understand the preposition what i want you to do is to imagine uh, that you are seated in a class in front of you is the professor's table or dice now imagine that table and think of the various positions 
uh, that the table can show. For example, on the table, under, under the table, below the table, beside the table, over the table, through the table, above the table. So you can understand in the table, at the table, on the table. So you can understand the various uh, prepositions of a place from that uh, particular example. And it's a very famous example. I will share the image of the professor table uh, and if I forget during after the completion of the lecture you should remind me that sir you have to share the professor's table example with us conjunction it's a close class of words conjunctions are usually joining words they are used to join sentences phrases or clauses clauses with clauses and there are two main types, that is the coordinating and the subordinating class. We will discuss it further and it is very important to understand the conjunction and its types because if you understand this concept fully, you will be able to understand the types of sentences, that is simple, compound and complex sentences. Interjection. Again a close class, uh, though uh, I consider it to be an open class because it keeps on changes, but however, the vocabulary here is limited. Uh, interjection is basically expression of joy or certain emotions, certain burst of emotion. For example, oh, wow, oops, aha, alas, different sounds like you make during the sports galas, hip hip hurray. Just hum nare bazi kehte hain, nare bazi ke saath hum ajeeb ajeeb awaazein nikalte hain. So this is what interjection is. It's sudden burst of emotion. So this is these are the eight parts of speech. But remember that apart from interjection, the remaining seven are very important. Apart from that, the articles of the adjectives are very important, though they are not part of they are not the ninth part, but they have a separate distinction as well. We will discuss it later on. But the seven types that is noun, pronoun, verb, adverb, preposition, conjunction and adjectives are very important. We will discuss their types in further lecture. Next lecture will be on a single part of speech that is noun and its types. So I want you to stay tuned and stay focused so that you may be able to understand and grasp the concept fully. Otherwise, you may lose something very important here. So if you have any questions, you can ask later on. Thank you very much.